This is a Fox News alert. President Obama and Speaker Boehner take the debt ceiling battle to the American people, both hitting the airwaves just a short time ago. We are days from hitting the deficit ceiling. No more borrowing, no more money. So what's going to happen? Wyoming Senator John Barrasso joins us. Good evening, sir. Thanks for having me. What do you think of the president's uh, speech tonight and Speaker Boehner? Well, the president seems to be clinging to that status quo of wanting to tax more and spend more. And I think the Speaker Boehner is absolutely right. You can't keep spending money that you don't have. You know, we're borrowing, what, four billion dollars a day, two million dollars a minute, a lot of it from China. Uh, you don't stay a strong, independent, forceful nation if you owe that kind of money to a foreign country who really doesn't have your own best interest at heart. All right, the president uh, has signed on as much as anyone signs out at this point to Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid's um, plan. Um, could you sign on to that plan? No, not at all. A lot of budget gimmicks, uh, a lot of accounting tricks. You know, you listen to the president tonight, and, and what did you hear? You hear class warfare, scare tactics. Uh, you, you saw a president that had no plan of his own, and all he did was use poll-tested words that he thinks are going to poll well with the American public. And that's not the way for a president to behave. Uh, and the president is there to educate people about things, not just scare them. All right, now you say accounting gimmicks in, in Senator Reid's. I've heard other people say that. Um, are you saying that there's accounting gimmick because it, it and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it calls for, uh, for cuts in the future for things that haven't even been appropriated? Well, there is that component to it. I do like the, the idea that in Speaker Boehner's approach that says, look, for every dollar you want the, the debt ceiling to be raised, uh, that we're going to want to find at least a dollar of a legitimate cut in spending. That's the problem. You know, I was at home in Wyoming talking to people all this past weekend. The problem for, you know, as people in Wyoming see it, it's not that they're taxed too little, it's that Washington spends too much. And the president still doesn't seem to get that. You've got to cut the spending. So we have eight days left. Um, What's your prediction? I mean, tomorrow everyone goes to the drawing board. You have the two dueling uh, bills here on Capitol Hill. You have one put before the go before the House and one before the Senate. Both will get passed, and then the two bills go to conference for some sort of reconciliation, right? Well, I'm uh, looking forward to Senator to, uh, Speaker Boehner getting his passed in the House probably uh, later this week, and then I'd like to have a chance to vote on that in the Senate, and I would vote for it. Um, and so, uh, w if we're having this conversation next Saturday night. What are we going to be talking about? I mean, where are we, get, where are we going to be? Yeah, we're going to find a solution to this. The American people How? do not. I mean, that's what I don't get. It's like, you know, we're, right, we're down to. It's we're going down to be a short term solution. It's going to be to two January? bites, two bites of the apple. Of, 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 for for bill. every, yeah, for every dollar of legitimate spending cuts you find, then they will raise the debt ceiling by that. But for the president to come up with an arbitrary number based just on his own election, he said, you know, there's only one real bottom line in all of this, and it's to make sure that that this goes through all the way past the election. You know, that's, that's not the role of the President of the United States, to be so focused on his election and not on the American people and the needs of this country. Why do you think he said that? Did he say that because, and I asked, the, I asked this of, of Senator Kyle, because he's only interested in his own reelection, or do you think he used that as sort of a line of demarcation because it really matters that the American people and the markets have some sort of sense of, you know, of, of prediction of, of what we're doing in the economy because there's a, there's a psychological component um, with the economy. Um, and, and how do we know which one? Well, he said it. Geithner also said the same thing, and they, and they specifically used the word beyond the elections. But the number of times, and, and you've also reported, the number of times that the debt ceiling has been raised, average about seven months. It goes up for about seven months, and they have to go back and do it over the, over the history of the raising of the debt ceiling. So for the president now to want to go out for over uh, you know, a year and a half, uh, it seems to be really focused all about him as opposed to on the country. All right, you know the, the threat of Moody's and S&P that they're going to downgrade our rating, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't get it, like, um, in the sense that these are the same people that got us into this mess with their, with their rating of those horrible, toxic uh, CDOs mm -hmm. in, in the, in the mid-2006, uh, 7, 8. Why are we listening to them, and why do they have so much power? Well, if we do go uh, downgrade on our ratings, that means that interest rates are going to go up. Right, and if it right, does, that's, why do, that's why a specific do, amount of money that we're going to have not to uh, spend on things, but it's still going to be money that we're not going to have. What I, don't what I don't understand, though, is that why they who have, who have failed us so drastically, and, and, are, and that was a huge contributing factor to the state of our economy, why, do, why are we now in a position, why are we letting them be in a position where they put the foot on our uh, throat and, and downgrade our credit rating, which will have a, a, a huge ramification? Like, why are we hostage to these two organizations and others? 
because we have a debt of $14 trillion and we need to keep borrowing $4 billion a day because we're not responsible in how we spend our money. People don't think they're getting, uh, you know, getting value for their money. Taxpayers think they're getting ripped off by the spending. Uh, they don't like it. Uh, but look at Italy. In two days, the interest rates there went up a full percentage point. Interest rates go up a percentage point on $14 trillion of debt. Now you're talking $140 billion a year of additional would you, would you, debt you know, payments that we would have in this country. If you think about this, if, if the economy were roaring, we wouldn't be having this discussion at all. You, that's and, it. I mean, if we'd go, if Jobs, you went, the economy, right, no, the because debt, we'd, we'd the have spending. Lot, we'd have lots of revenue, and, and the psychology of the country would be such that we'd be very, you know, we're moving fast ahead. But we're also uh, scared, tight, holding on to our money, and, and we have no revenue coming in because of the jobs. And a lot of uncertainty here. Of I uncertainty. mean, I hear about that, talk to the jobs creators in Wyoming, and they're saying, hey, I don't know what to do with what's going to happen happen with increased costs with the health care law and the mandates Which that. Which is going back to why they want a long-term decision rather than short-term. Regulations, the cost of energy continues to go up. The president released all the strategic petroleum reserve, 30 million barrels, and what's happened? Price dropped for a little bit, right back up to where it was, and the president's going to have to fill the reserve again. There's, there's some very... Uh, a number of policies coming out of here that say there's too much uncertainty, people aren't creating jobs. What we need to do is not higher taxes. We need more people working and paying taxes. Indeed. Senator, thanks, sir. Thanks for having me.